We interrupt this chapel. Oh, sorry. We interrupt this chapel hour to bring you a very special message. Again, it's Mark. Hi. Uh, as you can see, I'm still celebrating Christmas, as I'm sure many of you are. Uh, it is the the beginning of 2024. So you know what that means. That means that we are coming to you with the top six programs of 2023. Uh, we do this because we would like to give uh, Brother Weishart a break. And when he comes back, he comes back with a ferocity. So we hope that you enjoy this year's 2023 top six. Welcome. It is a pleasure to have you with us once again for the Weishart Family Chapel Hour. Just a couple of hours ago, I was uh, kind of leafing through my Bible, and I found a scripture that I think um, would be a good one for us to uh, learn and be aware of in the days we're living in. It's in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, now this is talking about the scriptures, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. This uh, last week, I have been reading a book that just came out last month, and uh, it's written by Dr. David Jeremiah, one of the outstanding ministers of this day and also an outstanding student of prophecy. 
he says, uh, we're not, we may not be at the end of the world, but we are at, and this is the title of the book, The World of the End. We're not at the end of the world. The book is not about the end of the world, but it is about the world of the end, and that is the world that you and I are living in right now. We don't hear a whole lot about religious persecution today. It's, uh, we're kind of living a sheltered life here in this great country of ours, and religious persecution doesn't make the news very much unless it's some sort of an outstanding case. But let me read you uh, a few words here that might uh, surprise you. It says, uh, by now, we might think we'd see a de decrease in persecution of people for their faith, right? We're no longer living in Roman times or the Dark Ages, right? Think again. In many parts of the world, the persecution of Christians now exceeds any period in history. According to Dr. Todd M. Johnson of Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary, more than 70 million Christians have been martyred throughout history, and more than half of those deaths occurred in our 20th century. He also estimates one million Christians were killed between 2001 and 2010, and another 900,000 between 2011 and 2020. And if you come back across the ocean to our side, listen to this. On the other side of the globe, four Christians in Venezuela were overpowered, beaten, forced to eat pages from the Bible. Each man was stripped and had a cross slashed across his torso with a knife. That is happening in our day. There are a lot of persecutions going around, and they're getting closer and closer to our country. When we see all of the negative and ungodly things happening in the world today, we're prone to begin thinking about the rapture of the church. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, we find Jesus sitting on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and they had asked this question, Master, tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Matthew 24, verse 3. Jesus' answer to the disciples' question in these three, three chapters in Matthew and Mark and Luke have been called the Olivet Discourse. And that is what this book covers, the Olivet Discourse, where Jesus is de describing the things that are going to happen prior to his coming. Jesus is getting ready to tell his disciples what kinds of things to expect prior to his second coming. So what are some of the things we can expect uh, prior to Jesus coming again? Now, as I read to you these things that we can expect that Jesus mentions, I want you to make a mental note of those, as I go down through the list, make a mental note of those that sound familiar to you. Let's start with Matthew 24. Many shall come in my name, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famine, pestilences, earthquakes in different places, iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And then Mark 11 as these, troubles, brother will hate brother, or brother will betray brother, fathers will betray sons, children will rise up against their parents. And then Luke has uh, these additional things, commotions, fearful sights, great signs from heaven. We will be betrayed by parents, brethren, kinsfolk, and friends. The sea and the waves will roar. Men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after these things which are coming to pass here on the earth. First and Second Timothy, uh, First and Second Timothy and Second Peter give us an idea 
of what the people are going to be like during these days. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, we read, In the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, the uh, contemporary English version of the Bible says, whose conscience, uh, they have lost the feeling in their conscience. And then listen to this long list in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, from the Living Bible. You may as well know this too, Timothy. You may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last day it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be hard-headed and never get into others. They will be constant liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immorality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will betray their friends. They will be hot-headed, puffed up with pride. They will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by people like this. And I've added my own list uh, to that. Shootings at schools and businesses and other places, 9-11, tsunami, Katrina, earthquakes, floods, fires, mudslides, drought, immorality, terrorism, uh, pestilences like the bird flu and AIDS and COVID and things like this. I bring all this to your attention to say this one thing emphatically. The second coming of Jesus Christ is going to be very soon. Well, you may say, we've always had the, these kinds of, of uh, bad things happening. The Bible says there will come in the last those, those who say, where is the promise of his coming? For uh, everything's going on just like it's always going on. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Well, you're right. You're right. But in, in my 90 years of being on this planet, I have seen, I've heard, I've read about, and even experienced some of these things. But the frequency of them, the frequency of them has increased dramatically in the last 10 years, and they have gotten worse. The trend of prophecy, the trend of the times uh, in the light of prophecy shows us that the storms of judgment are about to break upon this world. Uh, I may have reminded you in times past about Billy Graham's statement uh, over 50 years ago now. He said God is going to have to judge America or apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Critics are multiplying. Antichrists are rising. Now the word anti, uh, there is going to be the Antichrist, but the Antichrist, the word anti means against. So there are going to be a lot of people against Christ that rise up. False doctrine is spreading. Sound doctrine is being attacked. And the earth is groaning in anticipation of that day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Uh, it says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write to you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. Uh, Dr. Jeremiah, in his book, likens these last days uh, to a woman just before a child is born. There will be, there will be some real faint contractions, and, and then they may get a little stronger, a little stronger. Sometimes they may not last long at all. Sometimes they last longer. Sometimes they can last for over a day. Uh, but they, they, it's kind of like all the bad things that are happening. We've had them a little by little, a little by little, but they're getting worse and they're getting worse and they're getting worse. And one of these days, 
the Lord is going to come. So Jesus said in Matthew 24, 25, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and they will show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. John's word in 1 John 2, 18, little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists in the world, and uh, whereby we know that it is the last time. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 and 3, Preach the word, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You have those teachers that will just preach what you like to hear and never make you feel uncomfortable about persecution or the things that are happening in the world. Many who are not grounded and settled in the word will be sent strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Peter says that these people are willingly ignorant of the word. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 5. So what does this, all this mean to us? It means we are not in darkness that the coming of the Lord should take us by surprise. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 4. It says there that ye are not in darkness that that they should take you unawares, but you're fully aware of the things that you should be looking for. And we must keep in constant communion with God. We must always be ready. We must always be ready. Matthew 24, 44. Be ye also ready for in such a time as you think not the Lord will come. In chapter 25, verse 10 and following, the story of the ten virgins, you remember five of them were wise, five were foolish, foolish were not ready, but five of them were ready, and they went in to the banquet. In uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 40, it says, Be ye therefore ready also, because you don't know when the thief might come and come break into your house. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, for Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've, I've uh, read, finished the course, and I've kept the faith. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, The marriage of the Lamb is come, and his bride, that's the church, has made herself ready. But not only must be, we be ready, we must also be watching. Matthew 24, verses 42 to 43. Watch ye therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Mark chapter 13, verses 33, 35, 37. Three times it says, Take ye heed, watch and pray. Watch ye therefore. And then I, what I say unto you, I say it unto all, watch. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you might be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand to before the Son of Man. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 6, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you don't have any need that I should write this to you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. There's that illustration again. And you shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not in darkness. That that day should overtake us as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. First Peter chapter 4 verse 7 said, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch under prayer. And under the church at Sardis in 
the book of those first chapters of Revelation, John wrote to the church at Sardis, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the spirit, seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art, and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come upon thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what I, what hour I will come upon thee. The warning to the church at Sardis is also a warning to, to you and to me. Sardis was in danger, and she needed to repent and look to the Lord like she had at the first. So we must watch. We must be ready at all times. We must stay in constant communion with our God. We must keep our spiritual, our spiritual strength up. We take exercises physically to keep our muscles acting, and we need to keep our spiritual muscles active uh, as we look forward towards the end. And if you do this, uh, keeping our spiritual strength up comes from knowing the Lord and knowing his word and how to use it and praying and fellowship with the saints as we have in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but exhorting or encouraging and exhorting one another and so much more as you see that day approaching. A time of famine is coming, but it will have nothing to do with food. Listen to what Amos writes in chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. You need to study the word, memorize the word, know the word. It will be a big comfort to you when some of these times come. And they will come on some of us. They will come. Testing times are already here. But we do have an anchor. Hebrews 6, 19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. We have the written word. We have the living word. We have faith in God and in his word. And these will always help us so that we can always be ready and watching for Jesus' return. All through the Bible we see the contrast between what we have here on earth and what we have to look forward to in heaven. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, it says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And as you look through the book of Revelation, you see a new heaven, a new earth, a new home, new clothes, a new nature, a new name, a new existence. Time will be no more and we will be spending the rest of uh, our existence in eternity. Here's the battlefield. There is the triumph of procession. Here is the land of the sword and spear. There shall not lift up, they shall, nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Here we are daily running the race. There we will receive the victor's crown. Here is the place of war and strife. There is the place of perfect peace. Here is the place of sickness and pain and death. There is a place of health and life. Here we often part with friends and loved ones, but there we will be united once again in the wonderful family of God. Praise the Lord. Here is a place of crying and tears. There God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, 
neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Here is a place of darkness and night. There is a place of light and unending day. Here is a place of sin and evil. There is a place of glory and great. Here is a place of sorrow and despair. There is a place of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Here we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a place where we shall rest safe in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a place. What a place. Are you ready? And are you watching? Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly, and my, re my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And then Revelation 22, verses 17 and 20. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. He that testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And it's my fervent prayer, and the fervent prayer of all of us here, the Wise Heart Family Singers Chapel, it's our fervent prayer that you will be ready and watching when the Lord comes. You are not hearing a lot of this stuff, but it is happening. People are being killed. They're being uh, persecuted. They're being flogged. They're suffering in many different ways. Even as I speak, these things are going on. So we need to remember that uh, as we look through our, our, our history ourselves, we can see even today some little things happening that kind of kind of clue us in that hard times may not be far off from our country. So we need to watch and be ready. We need to be watching and waiting for the Lord. If you're not ready today, right now, would be a good time to do that and give your heart to the Lord. Say, Lord, I want to be ready when you come. I want you I want to come to you right now. I want to follow you for the rest of my life. Give him your life and from now on follow him and be sure that you are ready for that day. And if you're a Christian, look back over your life. Make sure that 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 that, that connection is strong with between you and the Lord. There's no occasion, no occasion for stumbling. The Bible that I read a while ago said there they would be things happen that if they're possible, they could even deceive the elect. Build yourself up on your most holy faith so that you will be strong when the Lord comes. We pray that this will be true with your life from this day forward. So we pray. Father, it is always a, a solemn time when we talk about the soon coming of the Lord because we know that, that when that happens, if we have friends, even family members that aren't ready, they would not go to be with us. So help us, help us today to make a new committal to you to live our lives before our family and our friends and our loved ones and those we work with so that they will perhaps ask us what we have that they don't have and we can tell them what it means to be a Christian and how to be ready for the Lord's return. We just pray today that there will be those that will see their need and turn to you even as we're speaking, Lord. We pray that all of us all of us, when the Lord comes, will be found watching and waiting and ready for your coming. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Rev. Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family. Well, hey there. 
Uh, hey there. <laughs> That's Mark. Yeah, I'm still. <coughs> hey, it's Mark again. Well, we hope, we hope while we take a little hiatus and hiatus. Uh, well, hey, how are you? I'm, I'm actually trying to tape here. Oh, I know you were low. I know here in the middle of you. It's a girl, yeah. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Reverend Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family Singers. For previous programs, please go to YouTube and search for The Weishart Family Singers Channel. If you're a minister, teacher, or student of the Bible and would like to access Reverend Weishart's messages, outlines, and sermon notes, please go to thechapelhour.blogspot.com. And of course, one of the best ways to stay in touch with us is on the Weishart Family Singers Facebook page. We want to thank everyone for finding us, for your encouragement, for subscribing to our channel, and for hitting that little like button. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Chapel Hour.